Ladies and gentlemen, now I wish to invite yang terhormat ke Cili, ahli Dewan Perdagangan Negeri Aikro to deliver his speech.
I think this is the values of charity. As I said earlier, the level of people involved in charity or consciously getting ourselves involved in charity reflects the values of a society and what a society values. And I think this is very much a Malaysian spirit. When times are easy, we prosper together. When times are hard, we leave no one behind. And I think this is what I see in Happy Charity Association. Can we give a round of applause to Happy Charity Association? I, I was very touched by what Happy Charity Association has achieved in the past few years, especially during the pandemic. I had the chance to also work with Happy Charity uh, during some of our programs, and I can see how enthusiastic, how genuine are the groups from Happy Charity in trying to de deliver help to some of the poor and needy. We know the pandemic has changed some lives forever, but it doesn't have to stay that way because all of us can actually come together and then helping hand to those who are in need. And this is what I think a society in the first, first world country should look like. And also, Chinese New Year has just passed, but I think it's not too late for me to wish everybody a happy Chinese New Year. Uh, there's a saying in Chinese that says, The Chinese community believes that if you were to plan something great, you want to achieve something and you need to do proper planning, you better start it during the beginning of the year. Chinese New Year happens to be the beginning of the year, but when I say beginning, it doesn't necessarily mean the beginning of a calendar year. When we look at Malaysian context, we are also at a new beginning now for a new Malaysia in terms of political stability, in terms of the healthcare system, in terms of the economic challenges and so on. We are at the beginning. What we do now and perhaps for the immediate next three to five years will decide the future of the country. We are indeed facing a lot of great challenges, such as you know the ongoing trade war between China and US that has affected some of the countries, especially the Southeast Asia, Ukraine and Russian war, and then uh, subsequently the uh, energy crisis that has not even hit most of the country fully, but I think eventually it will have some spillover effect uh, that we may realize very soon in the face of a global market. But also there are many opportunities. Opportunities such as there's a rise of AI right now, ChatGPT, I'm sure some of you may have seen that uh, in the internet, ChatGPT, AI, 5G is coming. In fact, according to what the Expo of Communication Multimedia replied me in Sidangdun, we now have 5G in Malacca. But of course, as a former Communication Multimedia Expo, I would say there are much more planning needed for Malacca as well as for Malaysia before we can become a first-class, technologically advanced country. One particular issue that maybe all of us should also think collectively and work on it collectively is the economy faced by our Close to 40% of them are actually underemployed 
which means they are still required at their current job. There's a match at their skills. Not too sure about the remuneration. There's a really nothing wrong with being, you know, not wanting to further your studies if they have a plan. For example, the rise of gig economy nowadays. However, if more and more youth in our society decide not to further their studies, but instead switch their focus to gig economy, you know, being a grab driver, being an online streamer, being a you know influencer and so on. Nothing wrong with that. No dis no disrespect to the, the segments of work in the gig economy, but if this is a rising trend among the youth, then I think the country will face a problem in terms of achieving a technologically advanced status or even being a first first class country. This is something that we have to think about because for us it's more important for us to be technologically strong, vibrant, high productivity and all that before we can achieve a technologically advanced country. We need more and more talent in the respective field. So this is perhaps something that all of us should work together and even just spreading a message to the young people out there and tell them making money may not be the first priority, especially for those who are in the 20s, but making the right choices that will benefit you in the long run and benefit the community in the long run. This is what that matters. And this is what I truly believe in. And I think Happy Charity Association has done such a good job in the past few years as we all have witnessed, either witnessed personally or witnessed in the social media or in the press. Therefore, today I think we should all copy this spirit from uh, Happy Charity Association and try to spread the right values to the society and to the people around us. On behalf of, I cannot say on behalf of the state government, I, I, I could say that if it, it was three years ago, but today, on behalf of all Malacans, thank you so much, Happy Charity Association, and I wish you all the best, and also Happy Chinese New Year to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. And please give me our speech, Audrey. Now I wish to invite the, dep the Deputy Chairman, Mr. Sim Chuan Boon, and the Honorary Secretary, Mr. Miao Wen Xiang, to come on stage to present a token organization to Babika. <laughs>